<laughs> All right, boys and girls. So we've been talking about how readers make inferences, and we know that these are basically decisions that we make about the text. We've even learned through that video, Hair Love, that when we're watching a video, we're also making inferences. Again, we're using our background knowledge along with what we see and what we read to make these inferences or decisions. So look at the front cover of this text. It is titled Those Shoes. Uh, which shoes do you think they're talking about? Right, you just made an inference. They're probably talking about these, the black and white striped. And make an inference about this character right here. What do you think about him? If you guess that he's probably wanting these shoes, you probably used his facial expression. He's kind of looking back at these boys along with the fact that he's not wearing them to make the decision that he probably wants what these boys have. So we're going to start reading and you're just going to follow along and just like we normally do with vocab, I'm going to read out loud and kind of give you guys some clues and ask you to think about what you're noticing. I have dreams about those shoes, black high tops, two white stripes, grandma, I want them. There's no room for want around here. Just need, Grandma says. And what you need are new boots for winter. Brandon T. comes to school in those shoes. He says he's the fastest runner now, not me. I was always the fastest before those shoes came along. Nate comes to school in those shoes. Antonio and I count how many times Nate goes to the bathroom. Seven times in one day, just so he can walk up and down the hall real slow. Next, Alan, Jacoby, and Terrence each get a pair. Then, one day, in the middle of kickball, one of my shoes comes apart. Looks like you could use a new pair, Jeremy, Mr. Alfrey, the guidance counselor, says. Now let's pause right there for a moment, boys and girls. I want you to think. What can you infer about our character in this situation? Make a decision. Okay, so what I've decided, uh, my inference, is that when I look at his shoes and I also think about what I already know and what I've read, earlier in the text, I learned that he lives with his grandmother, looks like maybe they're in a smaller apartment, and she makes that comment that it's all about what is needed, not want. There's no room for want around here. So my background knowledge along with what I've read and what I see would lead me to infer that perhaps money's pretty tight in their house and that right now he's living with grandma, they're doing the best they can, but that they can't really afford these shoes, even though he really wants them. Let's continue. He brings out a box of shoes and other stuff he has for kids who need things. He helps me find the only shoes that are my size, Velcro, like the ones my little cousin Marshall wears. They have an animal on them from a cartoon I don't think any kid ever watched. Okay, so many of you are already making an inference and you don't even realize it. How's he feeling right now? Take a close look. Based upon your background knowledge and what you just read and heard, and looking at his face, how's he feeling? Right. You probably said something about he's feeling a little embarrassed and he doesn't want to wear the shoes. How'd you make that inference? Well, you looked at his facial expression and you knew. When he said that they came from a cartoon no kid has ever watched, you might infer that what's about to happen is exactly what you see in this illustration. He wears the shoes and his classmates are giggling. Let's continue. When I come back to the classroom, Alan Jacoby takes one look at my Mr. Alfrey shoes and laughs. And so do Terrence, Brandon T., and everyone else. The only kid not laughing 
is Antonio Parker. At home, Grandma says, how kind of Mr. Alfrey. I nod and turn back to my work. I'm not going to cry about any dumb shoes, but when I'm writing my spelling words later, every word looks like the word shoes, and my grip is so tight on my pencil, I think it might bust. On Saturday, Grandma says, let's check out those shoes you're wanting so much. I got a little bit of money set aside. Might be enough. You never know. At the shoe store, Grandma turns those shoes over so she can check the price. When she sees it, she sits down heavy. Maybe they wrote it down wrong, I say. Grandma shakes her head. All right, you're probably making another inference right now. Good readers make inferences throughout the text. What's happening? Make a decision about our character. What are you thinking? Well, we know that when it says here, she sits down heavy, that probably means that she's a little disappointed. What we've learned is that grandma saved up a little bit of money and she goes to look at the shoes with her grandson. She flips it over and this is her facial expression and she sits down on the bench. Make an inference, what's going to happen? Then I remember the thrift shops. What if there's a rich kid who outgrew his or got two pairs for Christmas and had to give one of them away? So was your inference correct? Grandma did not have the money to pay for the shoes. Let's continue reading and see what happens. We ride the bus to the first thrift shop, black cowboy boots, pink slippers, sandals, high heels, every kind of shoes, except the ones I want. We ride the bus to the second thrift shop, not a pair of those shoes in sight. Around the corner is the third thrift shop. I see something in the window. Black shoes with two white stripes, high tops, perfect shape, $2.50. Those shoes. My heart is pounding hard as I take off my shoes and hitch up my baggy socks. How exciting, Grandma says. What size are they? I shove my foot into the first shoe, curling my toes to get my heel in. I don't know, but I think they fit. Grandma kneels on the floor and feels for my toes at the end of the shoe. Oh, Jeremy, she says. I can't spend good money on shoes that don't fit. I pull the other shoe on and try to walk around. They're okay, I say, holding my breath and praying that my toes will fall off right there and then. But my toes don't fall off. I buy them anyway with my own money, and I squeeze them on and limp to the bus stop. Go ahead and make an inference. What do you think is going to happen? Why do you think he chose to wear shoes that are too tight? Right, our background knowledge tells us what he's trying to do is probably fit in with all of the other children who are wearing this particular shoe. He does not want to wear this shoe with the silly animal cartoon on it anymore with the Velcro straps. He wants to be just like his classmates. And we might make an inference that he's willing to sacrifice what might be kind of painful on his feet, wearing shoes that are too small, because again, he's trying to fit in and impress others. I'm looking, I guess this is his bedroom. I see a scarf. I'm making an inference. It might be cold outside, right? Didn't grandma say earlier she needed to get boots for him? Let's keep reading and see what happens. At home a few days later, grandma puts a new pair of snow boots in my closet and doesn't say a word about my two big feet shuffling around in my two small shoes. 
Sometimes shoes stretch, I say. Grandma gives me a hug. I check every day, but those shoes don't stretch. I have to wear my Mr. Alfreys to school instead. One day during math, I glance at Antonio's shoes. One of them is taped up, and his feet look smaller than mine. Okay, boys and girls, make an inference. What do you remember, and what have you learned about Antonio? Use your background knowledge. What can you infer? Well, earlier in the text, we learned that when... Jeremy walked into the classroom wearing the shoes from Mr. Alfrey. Everyone laughed at him except for Antonio. And now we've just read that Antonio's shoe is put like staying together with tape. So one of his shoes is completely taped up. And we also learned that Jeremy makes the observation that Antonio's feet look a little bit smaller than his. So nowhere in this text does it say that Antonio is also from a family with maybe very little money and they cannot afford those new shoes, right? It never said that, but that's an inference or a decision that you just made in your brain based on your background knowledge and what you've read. Another inference that some of you have made maybe is that I wonder if Jeremy will reconsider his shoes. He makes a statement here, his feet look smaller than mine. So that's kind of, we're making a prediction, maybe what Jeremy will do, maybe he'll give him the shoes, I don't know. Let's continue reading. After school, I head to the park to think. Antonio is there, the only kid who didn't laugh at my Mr. Alfrey shoes. We shoot baskets. A loose piece of tape on Antonio's shoe smacks the concrete every time he jumps. I think I'm not going to do it. We leap off the swings. I'm not going to do it. We race from one end of the playground to the other. I'm not going to do it, I say. Do what, Antonio says, breathing hard. Make an inference. Look at the illustration. What's he going to do? Let's keep reading. Grandma calls me for supper and invites Antonio over too. After supper, he spies my shoes. How come you don't wear them, Antonio asks. I shrug. My hands are sweaty. I can feel him wishing those shoes were his. That night, I am awake for a long time thinking about Antonio. When morning comes, I try on my shoes one last time. Look at the illustration. Now I'm going to see the second page. Make an inference. What just happened? Before I can change my mind, the shoes are in my coat. Snow is beginning to fall as I run across the street to Antonio's apartment. I put the shoes in front of his door, push the doorbell, and run. Make an inference. Why did he run? Great. Right. Maybe he's just trying to be a really good friend, and he wants to surprise Antonio. And he also, maybe he thinks Antonio might be embarrassed if he knows that his, that his friend gave him the shoes. I think Antonio secretly will know where they came from, but Jeremy's trying to be like a really good friend and not make him feel awkward for giving him his shoes. At school, Antonio is smiling big in his brand new shoes. I feel happy when I look at his face and mad when I look at my Mr. Alfrey shoes. Take a look at the illustration. What can you infer? Right, we know that he got snow boots, so maybe now winter's changing or the seasons have changed. It's cool enough out. Maybe there's snow. Maybe they're going to wear boots now. Maybe the shoes will no longer be a problem. It doesn't say that anywhere in the text, but that's a decision you just made. But later when it's time for recess, something happens. Everywhere there is snow. Leave your shoes in the hall and change into your boots, the teacher announces. Leave your shoes in the hall. It's then I remember I ha what I have in my backpack. New boots, new black boots that no kid has ever worn before. Standing in line to go to recess, Antonio leans forward and says, thanks. I smile and give him a nudge. Let's race. Excellent job making inferences, guys. So again, as readers, we do this without even recognizing we're doing it. We're using our background knowledge along with what we've read and what we've seen in the text.